Morning boss, how are you going? Elias, I need to desperately find out what Joe Bob's been doing in work hours. Uh, okay, in what application, what context, like we're talking Teams, Outlook? All of the above, and I need it yesterday. Ah, okay, sure, we will do. Good job, make it quick. Over the past year or so, or maybe since actually the pandemic has started, a lot of people have been asking me, a lot of my family, my friends, the people I work with, sometimes the people that work at the organizations I do some work for, I always get the same type of question. What can my organization or what can my boss see me doing in Microsoft Teams? Sometimes it's just Microsoft Teams, sometimes they ask questions about emails, they ask questions about SharePoint, and maybe just other bits and pieces that you might be using on Microsoft 365 or maybe some other application within Microsoft 365. But the general question that I get a lot of is, what can my boss see or what can the organization see that I'm doing? So today I'm going to answer that question, I'm going to try and be brief I'm gonna try not to get too technical I'm just gonna try and tell you that some of the things that I know we can see as administrators maybe some of the things that we get asked if we can look at on behalf of an organization or on behalf of someone's boss or something like that and I'll just give you a breakdown of what we actually can see and maybe some of the things that you shouldn't do so as usual if you're liking the content smash the like button smash the subscribe button if you're enjoying the content I really please ask you to smash the like button it really motivates me to make more it really encourages me I really like to see that you guys are getting value from this content so please do me a favor and just smash it right now. So let's answer this once and for all. What can your boss see and what can your organization see when it comes to Microsoft Teams and it comes to your emails and it comes to SharePoint? The answer is everything. Basically anything that you do inside the Microsoft 365 suite, it's recorded. A log is entered every time you complete an activity. All of your files that you store in there are accessible because they're the company's intellectual property. Anything that your boss needs to access or the IT team needs to access, it's all very easy to get to. It is secure from the outside world. It is secure from your other peers that may not have administrator privileges, but from your IT team and from your bosses and from HR and from the organization itself, it is not. We are able to get basically anything. We can get your emails, we can get your teams, we can get your chats inside teams, inside channels, in your private chats. We can have a look at what you've been looking at in SharePoint. We can look at what you've deleted. We can look at the emails you've deleted, what time you deleted them. Basically anything gets tracked and logged and it's all for compliance purposes. We need to know that the people can be held accountable for the things that are completed inside that organization, inside that tenant. So for example, if someone goes in and deletes 5,000 emails, we need to know that that person has done that. We need to be able to restore it. We need to have the means to hold someone accountable for doing something like that. If someone goes into a Teams channel and deletes all the files that have been uploaded, we need to know who done that. We need to be able to go in there and pull things out in case someone leaves. We need to be able to go in there after the fact. So if someone has actually been terminated for some reason, we need to be able to get into that person's account so that we can see what they were working on, what they were doing at the time, maybe do any sort of legal investigations that need to happen as well. So there is compliance requirements for this as well. More importantly, if you are worried about what that person can see in Microsoft Teams or in Microsoft 365, you should just assume that they can see everything. I'll give you an example on the screen here to show you what it may look like to an administrator or a boss once they have actually gone in to see what you've been doing. So within the compliance center, we can see pretty much anything. We can do content searches on all your mailbox, on all of your Teams data, all of your OneDrive data, all of your SharePoint data. So some of the examples that you can see here, these are us doing searches to see maybe if someone has received an email, accidentally deleted it, or if they've received some type of a spam email, or if they've received some type of junk email that we don't want to be junk, or maybe we're wondering why something was received in an inbox, but it should have been marked as junk. Or sometimes maybe even the user wants to know where something went or wants to restore something, this is how we do it. So basically from here, we can see all sorts of data. We can do extracts from SharePoint. We can do extracts from OneDrive for Business. We can do extracts from Outlook. We can retrieve all of that data, download it, and then show that it has come from your inbox or from your OneDrive account, etc. Now, when it comes to Teams, Teams can be a little different. So in Teams, we can view basically everything because it's backed by SharePoint. So Teams actually lives on the SharePoint platform. So anything that we need to extract, we can extract from SharePoint as well. But when it comes to things like chats, we can extract it in many different ways. We can use things like Graph API and we can pull all the chat data that you've had in a certain conversation, but in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, or we can also pull the chat data between 
people inside a certain Teams channel. We can also see all sorts of things like when you were available, so reports of actually how many times you were in calls or when you were out of calls or when you were idle or when you were just signed into Teams. We can see reporting on all of that sort of thing. We can also see how often you're in meetings how often you are actually busy doing something and we can sort of see a lot of the activity that you do in Teams as a report. So basically telling us how productive you are. When it comes to your mail, keep your personal mail out of your inbox because your mail is very often, and from experience in my 13 years experience in IT, it is very, very common for us to do exports of Outlook mail more than anything else. So in my time in IT, I've done many, many different types of exports of mail data when a person leaves an organization, when they get terminated, when they leave unexpectedly for whatever reason. This is the very first thing that we do in a lot of the scenarios. So a lot of the time our boss or their boss will come to us and they'll say, we need to get all the data from this person's mailbox. And that usually gets attached to the user's mailbox or the boss's mailbox because that person needs to go through and make sure that they've captured all the things that you've been working on. That can also sometimes be incriminating being in situations where it has been incriminating. So try and keep all your personal mail in your personal email and try and keep all your work mail in your Outlook or you're in your 365 for work. Basically what I'm trying to say is don't leave anything incriminating in your work mailbox. And if you do, don't think that it's gone if you delete it because most mailboxes have some type of litigation hold on them and even after you delete something, we can retrieve it. When you do delete mail, doesn't mean that it's gone from the server or gone from our sort of archives and we can always retrieve it, we can always view it. So if I go and do a content search on your mailbox, I'll see all the mail you've deleted as well. And I won't even see it as deleted, I'll actually just see mail in there as if it was there on the day. So with that knowledge, be safe. Don't have any personal conversations in emails or in Teams or in anything that you don't want to leave a mark with, then keep it away from your work-related accounts. Keep everything personal. So the other thing we should address is whether your organization is actually logging data outside of Microsoft 365. So does your organization know the websites you're visiting or the applications you're using when you're not actually at work? So when you're working from home or when you're working remote? The answer is possibly. So if you wanna see a video about that, let me know in the comment section below. I'll give you a bit of a breakdown. Maybe I'll let you know how you can tell if you're being tracked or if your activity is being monitored. Maybe I can let you know in the next video. Let me know if you wanna see that below. Otherwise, like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.